Welcome to everyone to worship today and a special welcome to all of our visitors and guests who are here with us this morning, as well as to everyone joining us by video and podcast. We would like to give a special thank you to everyone who helped with our ice cream social yesterday. In particular, we want to thank all of you who donated food, helped with setup and takedown, who helped serve the food, and who came to enjoy the food and fun times together. Uh, do we have anything more to say about the ice cream social? Debbie. Yep, of course. So in other words, buy stuff, buy lots of stuff, we got plenty of stuff. Our annual community worship service will be on Sunday, August 6th at the Firehouse. Please call Jeff Ayersman at the number in your bulletin to order your ticket for the chicken and pork chop barbecue after the service. Faba will also be selling ice cream, so we get even more ice cream. Also, we are in need of, of at least two volunteers from our church to serve as ushers for the service. Please let me know if you'd be interested. The other announcements I leave to your own rating. Now comes the moment you've all been waiting for already. We're going to draw the quilt, and here's, here's something special I'm going to do today. I believe we have someone who has a birthday today. Who would that be? That would be Brayden. Yay!
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time we'll have our children's message, and we invite the children to come forward.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you think that, well, pretty much since January, really, the weather around here has just been all over the place? Yep, it really has. We've gone from hot to thunderstorms, and earlier this year, we went from warm to cold and back again a lot. However, there's actually been a silver lining to all the dark clouds, no pun intended. Um, there's been, especially if you've been driving around the last couple weeks, you probably noticed that there's one benefit from, from going to, from this hot to rainy weather. The corn has been growing pretty fast. Anyone notice that? Yeah, the corn has just been really springing up. At least a few people pointed out, have pointed out lately that we say we want the corn to be what? I by the 4th of July. Well, I'm going to tell you folks, this 4th of July, the corn was not only knee high, in some places it went up to my neck. That's how, that's how tall it got. And only a week or two, or two ago, some of you probably noticed, it started tasseling already. That's pretty fast. From, now, from what I know of corn, if it keeps growing the way it's growing, that means the farmers are hopefully going to, hopefully going to have an early harvest um, with a high yield to get everything in and sold. Even the beans of the fields are looking nice, fluffy, and green. So, I definitely encourage all of us to pray, um, to, to pray for continued good weather for the crops in the fields, to keep the weather for getting, from getting too hot for too long, uh, like it's going to supposed to be for the rest of this week, to protect them from bugs or disease, to keep them safe from any more hail like we had recently, and even to protect them from getting eaten by other critters. Because, yes, I'm sorry to say, Critters do like to eat corn, especially raccoons. So we're going to pray that God keeps the raccoons away until after the harvest. During this growing season, we look forward to what God is doing to help the crops around here blossom and yield much fruit. And we also pray for him to bring us growth in our hearts, faith, personal lives, and in our church family. We pray for God to bring us growth in all those places. Even though we went through a time of uncertainty, hardship, challenge, conflict uh, during COVID and for a year or two afterwards, God is causing growth to happen again. Perhaps not in numbers yet, but he has definitely been showing us a few things, even challenging ones, to help us to be able to move forward, grow, get back to where we need to be, and start blooming again. He has been tending his, us as his garden by renewing and refreshing us with renewed fellowship, being able to worship in the space as we did before COVID, and showing us new possibilities for how to reach out to our community with his love again. He is taking what was lost and restoring it. He is turning things around and bringing them back on course. The most important way God brings growth is through his word. As God, speaking through the prophet Isaiah, Says in, today's, says in today's first reading, God's word always does what it accomplishes. Even if we don't do anything on purpose, God's word still does what it needs to do to cause change, growth, and transformation. Now, I've been a pastor for 20 years, and one thing I've learned over the last 20 years is that the most important and the most effective thing you can do is just to preach what the Bible says and let God do the rest. Not everyone may be receptive to hearing what the Bible says, 
and not everyone may understand what is being said in the sermon. There may be some who, who may be like the path where the seed fell on in today's gospel reading, may hear, but it doesn't have any effect. Still others may, for whatever reason, have hearts like stone, resistant to the message being said, whether because of past hurts, prejudices, or anything else. And still others may have hearts choked up like thorns, distracted from hearing because of overwhelming worries, stresses, or anything else that's keeping growth from happening. And for others, the message hits in a certain way that brings life-changing results right away. But in all the years I've been preaching, I've learned that it's not my job to try to figure out how to make everybody respond all in the same way, all at the same time. God knows how best to implement the message being spoken, and so all the work is ultimately up to Him. Sometimes we may hear things said we don't expect, but God is still speaking, and if we listen, we are able to grow. Once we start growing, we are able to transform and then bloom and blossom. Even though we've gone through periods where, whether personally or as a church family, we've withered and dried up, God has caused something to happen to give us extra refreshment, to satisfy our thirst for whatever we've been missing, and has opened us up to let us be ourselves and let our true personalities blossom once again. But we always have to remember, remember that growth is a process, not an event. We can't rush ourselves to get to where we need to be. If we do try to go too fast or get there too soon, we might end up putting ourselves in a bad situation. Think about it like this. You need to get somewhere. You need to drive somewhere. But what happens if you try to get from point A to point B and you go too fast? What, hap uh, what, what could potentially end up, end, up, uh, end up happening with your vehicle? Well, you could lose control of it, you could crash, or even worse, if you try to go too fast. So we can't rush the journey. We have to go at a safe speed. In order to become who we are personally, we have to allow ourselves to change and transform slowly. To, to be happy, healthy, and the best we are meant to be. Those of you who have gone through rehab, especially physical therapy, as well, know that healing is a process that can't be rushed, or you might end up with a worse injury than before, or cause more permanent damage. Slow and steady progress brings the best healing and recovery. Taking baby steps is generally the safest route which also means growth involves a lot of patience. As Paul says in our second reading, if what we hope for we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently, which also means staying committed to growing. Just because growth isn't happening right away and you or we aren't where we need to be or at that end goal doesn't mean it isn't ever going to happen. As Paul also says, growth can involve even more struggle, even pain at times. To go back to the rehab example, for those of you who have been through it, you know that sometimes even just doing the exercises can be painful. We might be comfortable where we are, but in order to get to where we are meant to be, it might be moving somewhere new. How many of you have had to transplant some of your plants already this year? A couple of you. Well, the reason you've had to do so is you've you probably had to move them to places where they are able to get better sunlight, less sunlight, better soil, or just grow better in general. In the same way, God often needs to move us from somewhere we think we, we are to, to where we need to be. Or rather, he moves us from, from, where we think, from where we think we need to be, but he knows where we can best be able to blossom. So he moves us to places where he knows we can grow more effectively, even if we don't even realize it. As Gerald May says, true growth is a process which one allows to happen, 
rather than causes to happen. Yes, we have to water and nurture our plants and flowers to, to allow them to grow healthy. But at the same time, we also have to sit back and let them grow the way they're going to grow. It's the same way with us. We certainly are to continue to let ourselves grow and blossom as Christians by praying, reading the Bible every day, and being active in the life of our church family. But there is actually a lot of being passive, of letting go, and letting God take control that we sometimes forget. As cliche as it might sound, a lot of what we have to do is really just let God be God. That's really what faith is, letting God be the one in control, passively allowing him to cause things to happen to us. I'm going to ask another question for the kids here. How many of you have read the Frog and Toad books, or at least heard of them? Nobody? Okay, okay, one, one, per, one person has. Well, when I, when I was really young, actually starting when I was about, when I was about Braden's age, I started reading the Frog, and Toad, the Frog and Toad books. Actually what I did was, uh, th this was back in the cassette tape days, so I get cassette tapes, tapes of them and read along, read along with them to the tape, and that was pretty much how I learned to read, actually. Um, and, now, and now, of course, I'm getting to read them to Josie every so often. But anyway, there's a, there's a particular story where Toad plants some seeds in the ground, and he's so eager to see them spring up that he starts shouting at the seeds, now seeds start growing. Frog then tells him that they're probably afraid to grow because Toad's shouting at them so much. So he suggests just patiently letting the seeds grow while Toad does the watering and all the calm things to help them grow. Now for us, growth isn't something that can necessarily be planned, mapped out precisely, or have exact results. If that is our approach, then we end up getting frustrated and angry with ourselves or with other people and end up afraid because we're not growing the way we think we need to. So instead, we just need to trust our lives to God and put them in his hands. Let him transform us and help us grow the way he knows we are meant to. And in the meantime, just enjoy the life he's given us to live. Take advantage of everything he offers us to enjoy and live in the present moment we are given and enjoy the present moment we are given. And as we grow and have patience with ourselves and God, we are also to have that same patience with each other. We each bear different fruit. We are each at different places in life, on different journeys, and on different paths. And as a result, we are each blooming and blossoming in our own unique ways. We are, also, we are, we are actually, despite what we might think, we are actually not expected to think, act, or be the same way. If we were, we would be a cult devoted to conformity instead of to blooming. And that's actually what we can be expected to, to do as a church family. Allow each other to blossom and bloom. We have to let each other be who we really are and encourage each other to blossom and become who we are meant to be. We are also to recognize that each of us are at various stages and abilities and that maybe our purpose is not to contribute but simply to be. Bearing fruit doesn't always mean that we are all working for the same cause or even that we are on the same path, but that we are coming together as our own unique individual selves, valuing each other for who we are and being a family together. If we notice anyone withering or shrinking back in some way, we are to reach out and see how we can help refresh, renew, and encourage them. Then we can enjoy the fruit we offer each other, fruits of compassion, support, genuineness, helpfulness, and love. Even as we are growing, we can help each other grow, even as God is helping all of us to grow and blossom. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now together let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the offering. We wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. Let us lift our hearts, hands, and voices in prayer to God on behalf of all people. Fill this church with the Holy Spirit. Help us to bear rich fruit, and let us always give you glory and nourish people hungry for your healing and love. Make everything we say and do faithful and fruitful. Make it beautiful with holiness and rich with wisdom. Let your word take root in it and accomplish your purpose. Make your word grow richly in us so that many are fed by it. Draw many people through our doors, hear their prayers, heal their lives, and accomplish their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, thank you for favorable weather and fruitful earth, for the fields and orchards, flocks and herds, streams and seas, which nourish and feed us. Help us to be generous stewards of your bounty, sharing with all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, Help us to walk alongside just one other person who struggles with doubt, grief, or despair. Help us speak words that are clear, faithful, truthful, and loving. Help us to enrich their faith in you. Help us and them to bear much fruit to your glory and for the sake of those still hungering for your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the government and all those who protect us. That they, may be, that, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Lord, in your mercy. Bring healing and hope to everyone who is afflicted by sorrow and suffering. Lead them out of their darkness into the brightness of your saving love. Grant peace to their hearts and joy to their loved ones. Give them clear reason to praise your awesome deeds of salvation. We especially lift up everyone who we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, dear Father, for all who have died trusting in you. By the merits of your dear Son, gather us safely to yourself, where with all whom you have redeemed, we may sing with joy forever. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.